ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit of the Wild Podcast. Blue please on cynicalbritch.com. I noticed that one or two of you were kind of interested in how the Twilight Highlands intro for Alliance went. And I must admit it piqued my interest as well. So I decided I would do that with my brand new pre-made US Night Elf Mage. Yeah. I also specced it Frost. Just because I fancied trying it out. Pure Frost, no less. You'll see how well that does a little bit later on. It's actually quite good, and I will do a video at some point that details all of the mage talents, and then get people that know what they're talking about to do the rest of them. This is a very different introduction, and it's quite cool. It's a little bit less scripted, but it's more involved in terms of the questing, and the questing is far more interesting. So I don't really complain about that too much. No epic airship battle, I'm afraid, but still pretty good nonetheless. Admittedly, the initial quests seem to be a little bit dull. They involve chaperoning the prince around. Taking him for a walk, like some kind of pet. What is that thing he's wielding, anyway? It's kind of a lollipop. He's grown up a bit, though, so... It's not too bad. He's not whinging about where his dad is. No, I would like to speak to you because you give me experience. Oh, wait, I'm level 85. You give me gold. I don't know anything about the law, so I don't know what Logash is, but hey, there you go. So, we're staying within the city's borders, apparently, and uh, while we're at it, we need to investigate some strange goings-on. Let's get the fleet prepped by rallying the guys and saying, hey, we're going to be awesome, honest. And we also could do with speaking to Major Samuelson, who is to the left there, which I wasn't paying any attention to. Now... The prince will actually follow you around. He's like a little pet, like I said. And the nice thing about that is he will do so in a very intelligent manner. He does it with, say, a mount. And oddly enough, that mount switches between ground and flying. Which is a bit weird to look at, but it's very handy. It's very difficult to lose him. This is not an escort quest, thank God. Now, there are some strange goings on regarding the Twilight Cult in Stormwind. The prince suspected, so does Varian, and Major Samuelson has told us to go and interrogate some dock workers to see if anything is known about the Twilight Cult. It shouldn't exactly surprise you that the Twilight Highlands intro has got something to do with the Twilight. Really. There you go, see? No problem at all. He'll actually follow you around. He does bug out a little bit, but it's nice to have him follow you and not have to worry too much. You know, honestly, I kind of expected they wouldn't do that and that he would run around on the ground like an idiot. Thankfully, no, they did actually think this one through. So there you go. Can't really complain. There's some nice views of Stormwind as we go around. You should have seen that in the Stormwind Tour video many, many months ago. Oh, God, please don't listen to the commentary on that video. It's so bad. Like, yeah, I've never been in Stormwind and it shows. <sighs> okay. So... You get multiple quests at this point. Escort this guy to various places, and he'll often then hand you new quests, which is nice. It's nice to be followed around by a quest giver. Need help? And he does switch there to his horse, which is kind of handy, I suppose. But again, it is a little bit weird. It's very gamey. Because it's exactly what you would do as a player, and it's not a player. <laughs> it's not supposed to behave that way. And we also get a quest to go and speak to a farmer, which actually is kind of cool, and you'll see that soon. First things first, we've got to do something very generic indeed. But did you see that? You see that remark that he made there? Are you often asked to go and gather things for people? Yes, actually. Thank you. I love the way that the NPC is actually pointing out just how boring this quest is. It's as if Blizzard is poking fun at themselves, yet simultaneously they're saying, no, we're going to make you do this anyway. It's kind of a fourth wall breaking moment, really. It points out just how absurd all of this is. Then again, Blizzard have never been a company that can't laugh at themselves. And I think that's something that people really do need to bear in mind. Do any of you recall when I did that Welcome to the Machine video? There were quite a few people that commented on that video that actually got really offended and really upset by the fact that Blizzard was, in their view, pointing out just how bad the game really is and say, oh, yeah. Blizzard are finally admitting how terrible this game is. Like, no, it's just self-deprecating humor. There's nothing wrong with that, per se. But some people just don't get that. Blizzard is not above mocking themselves or mocking other things. They've got a good sense of humor. And 
any company or any individual that's confident enough in their own stuff is more than capable of using self-deprecation to make a joke. It's as simple as that. In this case, I think they're doing that, but more so than Welcome to the Machine, where it's mostly mocking stereotypes and the stereotypical quest. In this case, it's actually saying, yeah, why are you doing this at level 85 exactly? And that is a great question. Why are we picking up spare parts at level 85? Don't we have lobbies for that kind of thing? I mean, really? Apparently not. That said, a lot of the quests that you do do at level 85 are actually very, quote, heroic. Now, they are befitting of a man of your stature, and indeed most of this will qualify. It's a very good little story arc that they've got going on here. They fear and respect you, lol, lol, no. Yes, indeed. They're terrified by the very concept of a night elf mage. <sighs> Law. Law is so very flexible. It really is as well. You've got to bear in mind that the lore is tailored to explain certain things within the game. That's what Chris Metzen is told to do. They say, right, well, we're going to do this with the game, so Metzen, can you come up with an explanation for it, please? And he'll do a little bit of retconning, and he might just selectively interpret various things that he said in the past and said, well, actually, that's not what I really meant. And I'm like, well, the night elves, it's not that the night elves didn't have mages, it's just the mages got exiled, and actually, that's to the best of my knowledge, and... I wouldn't exactly say that goes all that far. That's technically true. I'm sorry. I'm just amused by this. Up and down, up and down. Switch your mounts. There you go. I don't know why they switch them onto a horse. You know, you can just ride around and use this as a ground mount. It's really very easy. I prefer if they did that because it doesn't look so video gamey. So silly. It doesn't make any sense for an NPC, but hey, there you go. I can see the comments now. I've got Google Alerts set on various ones of my videos and things like that so that I can track where they're being linked, and it's very easy to do so via YouTube Insight anyway. And I ran across a GameSpot thread, and why I'd post on the GameSpot forums, I don't know, but someone's like, oh, I've stopped watching Total Biscuits videos because he complains about everything. Like, well, that's what a beta test is supposed to do. You're supposed to provide feedback. It's not all going to be positive. Well now, just FYI, for those wondering, that is actually the recruiter to go to Vashir. So you don't need to take that right now. This is a brand new pre-made character at level 85, so it actually hasn't got any quests done on it at all. Ah, Flintlock, I've missed you so very much, he says with sarcasm dripping from his lips. They have added new sounds to him, though. That's very important. And most likely, by the way, he is voiced by Fargo himself. He used to work for GameSpy. He now works for Blizzard. So it would not surprise me in the slightest if he did the voice acting for that. There's actually quite a few Flintlock references. Someone accurately pointed out that the name of the bartender was Gravy in the Twilight Highlands Horde intro video. And, of course, I believe that is a character from the Flintlock comics. Okay. So, we're going to go to the farm. Now, there's a bit of a problem here, and this is definitely valid feedback. So, as it turns out, the farmer can be killed. And I assume it's a Horde player that did this, but I can't be 100% certain. He's technically neutral, but I don't know if he's part of a faction that you could declare war on it or anything. I don't think he is. Whatever the case, he was killed, and it takes a very long time for him to respawn. You can see there's a bunch of people waiting around for him to respawn. Takes bloody ages. So, let me just skip through that until he actually pops back up. I would strongly recommend to Blizzard that they vastly reduce his respawn time. I mean, seriously, this is just an absolute joke. Yeah, the only faction he seems to be a part of is Stormwind, and you can't really declare war on Stormwind, can you? <laughs> Not to the best of my knowledge. I remember back in beta, you used to be able to do that. It was very unfortunate. But yeah, that took about seven minutes, and honestly, the chance I was dead long before I arrived, so you're looking at a good ten-minute respawn timer. Not ideal for an NPC. That should never happen. Right, well, he's asked us to go investigate some cow slayings. I'm feeling a little bit Mulder and Scully right here. Yes, we're going to go find the mysterious dead cows by following the trail of gore. Delicious. It's a waste of good cow, in my honest opinion. It really is. Now, where's this trail? Aha, sparklies. Sparklies? <laughs> really? Sparkly pieces of meat. Right. 
You know what? I I'm just not going to buy from this butcher in future, really. It's not healthy by the looks of it. Hmm. An occult altar. I wonder what this is going to involve. A moonkin. And possible twilight cultists. Mostly moonkin. Perhaps the moonkin is a member of the twilight cult. I know he was hanging around just before I arrived at the farm. Maybe he is the one that killed him. You can never trust those bloody moonkin. Aha! It is a top. So... We're dealing with this. This is your obligatory attack by the Twilight Cultists. And as you can see, the damage on Frost is pretty damn impressive at the moment. Lots of brain freezing going on. You know what brain freeze does, of course. Wow, it's like a truck. Holy hell. So yeah, brain freeze gives you a free fireball or frost fireball. You're obviously going to want to use frost fireball. you got deep freeze as well, which you can proc, and you should be aware of what deep freeze does. It's a nice solid five-second stun, and you've also got fingers of frost, which I believe, if I remember correctly, fingers of frost allows you to treat a target as frozen, even if they otherwise weren't. Frost is not something I've really investigated at any point. I was mostly either fire or arcane in wrath, but like I said, I will do a big video on the talents, which will demonstrate the various things. But actually, the way that Frost is now set up, it uh, looks pretty entertaining. As to how competitive it is in DPS, well, it might be. I'll give it a try at some point in a dungeon. We'll see how it goes. Not sure if it's quite as entertaining as blowing things up with fire, but it's always nice to have that water elemental around. And there are a number of very nice talents now in the Frost Tree. Yes, we will not tell Daddykins about the fact that you almost got slaughtered by Twilight Cultists. That's fine. He's a little wannabe investigator, isn't he? To be fair, if you were trapped in the castle for all those years, I imagine you would be too. Quit getting in the way of my camera. He's such a... attention whore. Oh, look at me. I'm the prince. I'm pretending to do something useful, whereas in reality I'm just getting in the way. But I'm royalty. Respect me. He can't even fly in a straight line. Look at him. It's probably the first time he's ever been on a griffin, and it's rebelling against him. I'll toss him off there at any moment. Not like that. Right, SI7. As I recall, it's around here somewhere. Ah, I can't remember the last time I was actually here. Oh, yeah. That was a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, where I rolled up a rogue. I barely spent any time in Stormwind, but obviously you had to go to SI7 every now and again. It was an RAF thing, mostly for old-school raiding, but ugh. Alright, well, he says go to the third floor, and I thought, huh, there's nothing up here. Well, apparently there is, because they keep everything in a single wardrobe. Some secret freaking intelligence agency, isn't it? Not the highest security I've ever seen. Okay, so there's nothing there. What is Samuelson playing at, I wonder? So, Samuelson's either really incompetent or really evil. He is indeed holding out on us. He is keeping his pickles hidden. I wanted those pickles. Oh, this guy's got a hearthstone, by the way. <laughs> Talk about gamey as hell. I don't know, is that gamey? Is that not gamey? I don't know. I suppose it makes sense. That's something that everyone should be able to do. Hearthstone surely aren't the simple technology or arcane mystery of a hero. No. Why can't non-player characters use Hearthstones? I suppose there's no reason not to. Although his seems to be a lot quicker than mine. He gets the special royal Hearthstone. Yeah, I, I can deal with that, actually. That gives the NPCs a little bit of a more dynamic flavor. One of the things WoW does not do particularly well is give you this feeling that the world is actually alive and that things are happening. For all its faults, I go keep going back to this, Oblivion did kind of feel alive, although it was ruined by the fact that there wasn't enough voice acting in the game and that the conversations ended up being incredibly weird. Ah, mud crabs. Disgusting creatures. Goodbye. Yeah. Yes, that game. No doubt this is going to instigate yet another argument about Oblivion. Morrowind was better. That's a scientific fact. Good lord. Don't get me wrong, I liked Oblivion an awful lot, but it's not the paragon of RPG goodness. It really isn't. Try other games. Just play Planescape Torment. It's on GOG right now. Windows 7 compatible. Do yourself a favor. Play one of the best RPGs ever made. 
This is the old barracks area. It got screwed over in the Deathwing attack, and now it is one of the bases of the cultists. And yes, you did read that correctly when you had a look at the NPC name, assuming you were paying any attention whatsoever to the quest. Oh dear. Yeah. If you weren't paying any attention to the quest text, well, I guess you're just going to have to wait. Now, I have a very nice talent, by the way, here that allows you to stack two stacks of fingers of frost whenever you use the ability that your water elemental has, that AoE ranged frost. No, I'm not really using it too much here because I'm not used to the water elemental at all. I never use it. I've not been in any situation where I've used the water elemental. But once you do get used to it and you start using that ability, you can stack up fingers of frost really quickly and you can hit like an absolute truck. And I think that's going to be one of the key mechanics that makes this viable in PvE. And honestly, I am having a little bit of fun with this. It's not bad at all, although I keep forgetting to put up my... Ice Barrier. There is a nice talent, though, called Reactive Barrier, which will automatically put your Ice Barrier up under a certain amount of health if it's available. So even if you forget, it'll actually do that for you. <laughs> I don't know how I freeze that guy, honestly. It's pretty damn impressive. That's the same kind of mechanic as Fire, where you blow up everything. In this case, you just freeze everything within about a 20-mile radius. There we go. Lovely, delicious fingers of frost. Big crits. Awful lot of damage done there. Let's get our barrier up. Now, these mobs are not that easy. What you will find is that in Cataclysm, they've really scaled the mobs up so that if you are dealing with mobs around your level, they're going to hit an awful lot harder. If you're dealing with mobs higher level than you, there will be a much bigger disparity between those mobs and, say, the mobs that were in Wrath of the Lich King. In Wrath, you could very easily go and kill mobs that were several levels, levels higher than you as long as they were still yellow. In this, if they're even one level higher than you, they will actually be a real challenge. They have very much gone to town with the scaling and made it much more apparent that there was a difference between one level and another. And their justification for that, as you can probably read on MMO Champion, a blue post there, is that they only have five levels, so they want to make sure the difference between those five levels is much more noticeable. Now we are looking for our trapped agent. Go we'll deal with that. And even these level 83s do hit quite hard, especially that. That thing slices through you for a good 11 to 12k, so you do want to watch out for that. Try and stay away from them. Hey World of Pop Culture Reference Craft proudly presents Jack Bowden, and this is the longest day of his life. He's in a net, which must be kind of embarrassing. Okay, the Black Bishop, which sounds like some kind of kinky ladies massage product. Yeah. We're going to go find him. This is kind of neat because this is like a mini boss fight. And we've got to head on over to the cathedral in order to get there. You go to the cathedral, take a right down into the tunnels, and it's actually filled with twilight cultists. Although most of them are yellow and don't attack. The problem is they tend to aggro when the ones that do attack actually attack you, which makes the area rather difficult. I will show you just how difficult here. I end up getting killed by this. It might be my own fault, because I think I started firing off AoE, and then I got aggro from a bunch of different things, and they tore me a new one. This will at least show you where you need to go for this. I'm not familiar with the layout of Stormwind, but this was not hard to find. And I must say, it does seem like they've updated so much texture work around here. It is really quite nice. Very shiny. Okay, so you go down here, all the way down to the catacombs. I don't recall me ever enjoying a Catacombs level on any game aside from Deus Ex. Deus Ex had an amazing Catacombs level in Paris, so absolutely fantastic. But yeah, there you go. I've managed to aggro about four things right here, which is not what I would call all that helpful, really. And yes, they will beat on you, and it was kind of my fault for not going in here with a full health bar. These babbling cultists are yellow, but they will aggro you. They'll crit you for 4k, hit you for a good 2. It, it's not pleasant. So, let's try it again, shall we? Well, we've just skipped all of that, and this is the Black Bishop. He has 161,000 health. Mm, yes, indeed. Very impressive. And he actually has a selection of abilities, so he really is like a kind of mini-boss. He's not that hard to beat if you know what you're doing, but I like the fact that this is even here to begin with. Mini-bosses are neat, especially when they have text and dialogue and things like that. There's no voice acting, but at least it does come out with some interesting and rather crazy phrases. Yes, you are indeed the Black Bishop. He does a Mind Blast, he's got a Penance, and I believe he's also got some kind of Blink. 
is a little bit weird. He'll move over there, he'll put up a shield, you then break the shield, he'll fire off some shadow bolts, he moves him out. I just like the amount of effort that's been put into this. This is great. This is not your usual everyday run-of-the-mill mob, and it very well could have been. A lot of named mobs are often like that. This is actually fun. <laughs> More of this, please, Blizzard. I mean, really. There are a few other things like this in some of the zones coming up to this, but I just would like to see an awful lot more of it. There we go. Down he goes. He doesn't really drop anything, but the whole point was they were trying to blow up Stormwind Cathedral. That has been dealt with, thankfully. And as it turns out, we have evidence that Major Samuelson is in fact a traitor. Now I'd imagine that most of you already knew that. Not too hard to figure out, really. This is still a really kick-ass set of quests if you actually follow the quest text. And even if you don't, you sort of force-fed parts of it simply through your actions, which is a good thing. That's actually the way to effectively tell a story in a computer game. You can't have a situation where all you're doing is reading, unless you're playing a text adventure, in which case you absolutely can. But we're beyond that point. We are now in areas where everything is presented graphically. It's presented visually and through sound and things like that. And the medium of storytelling has to use all of these elements. Text, sound, visuals, and of course, things that happen in the game and the way that the content is presented and the way that you are made to play it. All of these combine together to make a compelling storytelling experience. And as a result of that, because it's a fairly new medium, a lot of companies tend to screw that up. They don't really understand it. A lot of companies come along and say, we'll just do it like a movie. Yeah, well, that doesn't work because this is an interactive medium, whereas a movie is not. So the same techniques that you use in movies and indeed books and everything else are not going to work. You've got to take some lessons from them and then put them all together and make a nice, fun, enjoyable storyline. In this case, they've done a pretty good job of that. Some more voice acting would be nice. I like that. And maybe a cutscene or two. Not too many. It's always nice to be more engaged in the action, but cutscenes can display stuff that you otherwise couldn't do in-game, and WoW is very limited in that regard. So, yes, it is a true... He is a Twilight cultist, and he's going to go try and kill the king. As it turns out, the prince actually saves him with a power word shield. No kidding. Oh, this doesn't look good, does it? Admittedly, he is doing this in the throne room while surrounded by many Stormwind Royal Guards. I don't think he's going to survive all that long. So he was apparently a faceless one. This is a new model. It's a different kind of faceless one. It's much more squiddy. Actually, that thing has a face, come to think of it. It's not a faceless one at all. It's a facey one. That's weird, isn't it? I've never seen that model before. Well, there you go. Messy. Very messy. Stormwind honors your service. Okay, you get this nice little uh, moment of reconciliation here. Where he actually ends up thanking Anduin and saying, Hey, maybe you're not useless after all. Maybe you can have a real weapon instead of that glowy lollipop. It's actually a PlayStation move. That's what he's got right there. I'm playing a little bit of sports champions. I was actually doing that earlier. Oh, God, that's so awesome. No doubt we'll get 50 people now asking, Can you do a move video? Yeah, I might at some point. I might. Someone's got to try playing World of Warcraft with a PlayStation Move. I'm sure it's already been done with a Wiimote. Anyway. We're going to go see Fargo. This is never a good thing. This usually involves explosions and really disastrous plans, as you're well aware. I loved that series. It was an absolutely fantastic set of comics. Fargo's a great guy as well. Had the pleasure of interviewing him a while ago now. He's really fun. Glad to see that he went to work for Blizzard. That's always a good thing. And it doesn't look like he's been absorbed either because he's making his presence felt all over the place. Injecting a bit of comedy. Good comedy as well. I think Blizzard's writers could always use a little bit of help in that department. Some of the jokes that are made are extremely lame, but I think a lot of the wit and the humor in Cataclysm is a lot sharper, although they have also gone with some of the goofy stuff, as you see in, say, the day Deathwing came and all sorts of other quests that have ridiculous pretenses. But there's room for that. It's a big game with a lot of quest content. You don't necessarily have to make everything dry wit or sarcastic or goofy or ridiculous or slapstick. You can have a nice mixture of all of them. And you know what? You're not going to please anybody if you try and please everybody. It's just not worth trying. Variety is good, ladies and gents. Now, where the hell is Flintlock? As it turns out, this does not display on the map. It says he's by the waterfront, but it's not clear as to where, and that's all bugged out. So let's just skip all of this, shall we? 
Just as a point of reference for those who are in the beta, that's where he actually is relative to the rest of it. Now, he's going to take us to the Twilight Highlands. Why do I feel less safe with him than I did the fleet full of very, very combustible airships and the crazy war chief? Yeah, that... Don't you laugh at me. It speaks to this guy's character. You know, can I just stay here and fish? It would be much safer. Oh, well. My fear of flying is about to get a very large justification. Courtesy of Mr. Fargo Flintlock. And his magnificent, quote-unquote, flying machine. We're about at the end of this now, so I suppose I'd better summarize what I think about it. It's, it's still really good. It's not as scripted as the Horde version, but it's got a lot of really good quests going for it. It's two different ways of presenting the uh, journey to the Twilight Highlands and, of course, tell you two sides of the... Ah! Yes. Two sides of the plot... And firmly establishing the Twilight Cultists as the big, nasty, evil enemy here. Which is good, because that's what you're going to be fighting in the Twilight Highlands. It's a good set of prequests, it really is. I like the fact that there's a conspiracy and a bit of a mystery to unravel, and it presents it in a really good way. Yeah. It's good. It's not bad at all. I still think the Horde one's a little bit more epic, but there's nothing wrong with these quests, and they are really entertaining, and Blizzard should be absolutely applauded for that. Very good indeed. And off we go, and somehow I think things are going to be going horribly wrong, so let me just up the volume for you for a second. And now you are deaf. You awake on the hull of a boat with a perverted dwarf staring at you. Get away from my stuff. I don't trust you in the slightest. Well, you know, I probably could have, let's be honest. Welcome to the Twilight Highlands. This is the Alliance version of it. That was entertaining as hell. Big fan. And you are in a place by the name of High Bank. This is the main Alliance town. And it looks like the Horde are getting busy with it already. That's what I like to see. Fly above it just to have a brief overview. But that was the Twilight Highlands from the Alliance perspective. And an untrustworthy dwarf who I will not be flying coach with again. Thank you very much. Hopefully you guys will enjoy doing that. Like I say, you need to be around level 84 to kick it off. And I would strongly recommend that if you're in the beta, you give that a try. Even if you're already level 85. Really awesome. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I'll see you next time.